We also have with us from Moscow, uh, Professor Vitaly Nomkin, who is uh, the president of the Institute of Oriental Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences, um, senior political advisor to the SRSG on Syria, and a professor at Moscow State University. Um, Russia is a player in the region, as we know. Uh, and I give you the floor, sir. If you could give us your point of view. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's a great honor and uh, big privilege for me to be with you and to speak to this distinguished audience. So I'm speaking about uh, Russia's role in the Middle East in the realm of the external powers presence there. Uh, we can see that uh, during the last years, uh, um, the Middle East uh, came back to the Russian, to, to Russia's priority in Russia's uh, foreign policy. Uh, why? Because the first uh, Russia started to establish itself as one of the most important uh, big uh, players uh, in the world, global players and regional players as well. Uh, then uh, the fact that uh, Russia's ties with the Middle East are historic, they are based on the legacy of very deep cooperation and uh, links between the uh, peoples of the Middle East and the Russian people. And um, if we compare the, what is happening now in the realm of uh, the, uh, Russia's presence and relations uh, with the Middle Eastern states, for instance, with the 90s, uh, when Russia almost uh, disappeared from the scene of this region, uh, so it's a bit different. But I cannot say that some people will say that Russia returned to the Middle East. We can say that uh, Russia uh, successfully uh, upgraded its presence or its influence in the Middle East and uh, started from uh, uh, 2015. Uh, we can see uh, a new phase of Russia's relations with the Middle East. Uh, we can say that it's uh, it's proactive. It started with the presence of the Russia's uh, air forces. Uh, and their operation in Syria. And uh, uh, speaking about the goals of Russia's presence, we can see that it's mostly uh, the same interest as uh, what uh, my colleagues said about the other external powers. I can say that it's uh, uh, cooperation between uh, Russia and uh, the Middle East uh, economically, politically, even militarily, given that, for instance, Russia needs uh, some moderate facilities for serving its uh, fleet in the Mediterranean. That's why <coughs> uh, Russia's base in Syria are fulfilling this goal. But it's a uh, secondary goal. The first goal, of course, is interest uh, of uh, stability in the Middle East, security in this region, because it's very close. Uh, to the borders of uh, Russia's partners in Central Asia and the Caucasus. And uh, we can see also that non-Arab states uh, started uh, uh, as they probably the most important uh, partners of Russia in the beginning of this space. Uh, and then other states uh, um, entered uh, the group of, of the most close partners of Russia. If we speak about Turkey, for instance, as one of the non-Arab partners, it's uh, uh, the most amazing, the most important uh, uh, economic contracts and projects like uh, uh, nuclear power station, or plant, uh, or uh, the Turkish stream gas pipeline. <laughs> and even if we take the uh, volume of tourism that just before pandemic in uh, uh, 2019, the numbers of tourists uh, from Russia to uh, Turkey exceeded 7 million. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of other things as well, you know, especially turning 
Turkey into the uh, uh, gas uh, hub uh, for, for exporting Russia's Russian gas to, to Europe. We can see that deterring the different threats coming from this region, unfortunately, uh, uh, especially terrorism and religious extremism, it's also one of the goals of, of Russia. And we can say that the, a relative calm in, in Syria, regardless of what uh, the others uh, think about that, is also the result of Russia's uh, relative success in uh, deterring this uh, threat and uh, reading this country from uh, from the from Dutch. Uh, uh, we can see some some other important uh, uh, you know links between Russia or bridges between Russia and the region. I think that uh, it is due to also to Russia's ability to adjust to the growing role of the of regional processes and dynamics, especially its readiness to play with key regional powers as a need. Uh, we can see that it it is built upon Russia's practice of reaching out to multiple partners and uh, built on non-ideological approach and uh, pragmatism. We can see that Russia uh, is trying to uh, to build relationships with all players, with uh, uh, different uh, uh, parties and states, uh, for instance, Iran and Israel on an equal, on an equal basis. And that's uh, because of that Russia is capable of uh, uh, playing uh, uh, the role of mediator uh, uh, in all uh, regional countries, uh, as we can see. At the same time, our approach is non-interventionist. Uh, we have no uh, colonial uh, legacy, which is helping us uh, in this relationship. Russia is not seeking uh, to replace or to compete some global powers, especially the United uh, States. If there's no desire and capability, uh, by the way, to uh, to compete the United States, uh, but Russia has its own place, has its own place. I can see that uh, after the what happened in Afghanistan, uh, there might be some also new role of Russia because uh, uh, I'm not speaking in, in, in the, in the uh, using expressions like uh, the United States defeat or something like that. No, it's a new, but it's a new state. And there is some loss of, loss of trust towards the United States, as, as uh, we all know. And Russia is not going to, uh, capitul to, to uh, capitalize on, on this, but at the same time, uh, we can feel some, some sort of uh, readiness from the regional partners <coughs> uh, to work more closely with Russia. I see, uh, I can see that it's, it's quite possible. And... Uh, even during the days of, 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 of uh, pandemia, because the Russian vaccines are working well and used uh, in this region, I can especially mention the so-called uh, new partners of Russia, new, uh, uh, new friends, especially the Gulf states. So, for instance, Egypt is an old uh, partner and an old friend. Uh, the same about uh, Syria and, and Iraq, but... Uh, uh, Israel is a new, a new, a new uh, partner and friend. Uh, Iran is the same, and, and the Gulf states are also the same. One example of, of how Russia is trying to reach out to different partners or different players, I would say, uh, even uh, those uh, who are not quite, uh, quite friendly to, to Russia, is uh, our dialogue uh, with Taliban. Uh, our uh, team of negotiators uh, have been uh, uh, meeting uh, the Taliban leaders during seven years. Seven years. They were coming to Moscow <coughs> negotiating <coughs> with our team. Uh, despite the fact that the Taliban are on the list of uh, terrorist organizations, are still there. 
and nobody is going to now to take them out of this list. We can we will see what's going to happen. So it means that uh, we're trying to build relationships with all. Uh, because we need the peace, we need stability, we need some, some presence who are serving our interests. I can see also that, <coughs> <coughs> that given our relationships with other outside powers, uh, yes, it's, uh, we have very difficult and complicated relationships with the West in general and especially with the United States. But still, uh, we have some limited uh, cooperation when it's necessary. For instance, Russia played a significant role uh, in the uh, 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 JCPOA process being a part of 5 plus 1. The same about many resolutions of Security Council, Council that were uh, passed during last year. Uh, some cooperation with the United States uh, uh, in exchanging information about terrorists, and uh, Russia's proposals uh, regarding the establishment of regional or new regional security system, inclusive system, which enjoys uh, support from, uh, from some partners, not all of them, but, but some partners who are thinking seriously about that. I could say also that some regional conflicts that are almost neglected now by many global and regional players, like uh, Palestinian Israeli conflict, is in the still in the center of uh, of uh, the attention of the Russian diplomacy, because Russia believes that without the solution to the uh, Palestinian problem, uh, no peace can be uh, achieved in the Middle East. Uh, coming back to the recent uh, developments uh, of, of, of uh, Russia's uh, relations uh, with the Middle East partners, I can uh, name oil and gas cooperation with uh, the states like Saudi Arabia, uh, deep cooperation in the oil market, our very good relationship with the United Arab Emirates. It's a reliable, reliable and very good uh, partner for Russia. Uh, in many uh, fields, and uh, I think that uh, I can stop here, and I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor.